Despite remaining neutral in the Great War and still following our neutral foreign policy, the Swedish population are worried about the war looming over Europe. Both the USSR and Germany have expressed their willingness to enlarge on their nations and we and our Nordic brothers will surely be in the way of their expansion. And with our army lacking a severe amount of ammunition and other weaponry, we would stand no chance to defend our nation. A few years ago, a parliamentary inquiry was launched to provide guidance in this massive issue. Currently, it stands firmly on the side of rearmament together with the Farmers' Party and the Moderates. However, our Prime Minister Per Albin Hansson and his Social Democratic Party are against it, citing that it would cripple his vision for social reforms. With both the inquiry and parts of the parliament turning against him, he has resigned to put his focus on the upcoming election. Instead, the farmers' party leader Axel Bramstorp took over vowing to rearm the nation and cut back on social spending. But this doesn't mean the new government ended all investments. Because with increasing industrialization and urbanization, it has become a necessity to fund infrastructure in our cities, to avoid them turning into slums. So Axel launched a massive campaign into new hygienic housing, starting in Stockholm and with the goal of spreading to the rest of Sweden in about two years. That was when the elections arrived, while the Social Democrats were still the biggest party with the news of German remilitarization of the Rhineland, support of rearmament has grown and together with the moderates the Farmers' Party have secured a majority in the Riksdag. This means Axel will continue as our Prime Minister and with the people behind him we have a greater freedom to change the social policies started by the Social Democrats. But we still have to be careful if stability drops below 65% due to too many cutbacks we risk strikes and riots something which would cripple our government and defenses. We started this new term by cutting back on civilian investment and spending the money on two new military factories. The weapons that will be produced in these factories have been contracted from plenty of companies around our nation, such as Husqvarna in Småland. These investments were enough to create a surplus in rifles and we decided to sell 1000 of them on the international market for a profit. While we tried to find someone to buy them, our government continued with civilian investments to raise stability for the next wave of rearmament plans. Starting work projects for the unemployed is a simple way to do it that also strengthens our economy. And by expanding the radio service we will ensure that the population is well informed and doesn't shift to radical ideology that could threaten our precious stability. Having reached 94% of it we would start our biggest rearmament operation yet. To seize the Landswerk, a German company using our territory to produce tanks and other equipment for the German army. It will hurt our relations with the Germans but largely shift our nation towards rearmament. We will also give some money to Bufors to help them develop improved anti-aircraft technology, something we will equip our army with in the future. Meanwhile, the Social Democrats had proposed state-sponsored vacation, something which the moderates are strongly against. So in the end it was decided that privately managed vacations would be the way forwards. This decision paved the way to the Saltsjöbad agreement to be completely torn up, freeing the workers and businesses from each other and steering us towards economic deregulation. However, before we go down this route we still have some civilian investments to do, like expanding the Royal Institute of Technology, aiding both our military and our civilian sectors, as well as continuing to invest into our infrastructure, more specifically our rural one. In 1907 the SKF company was founded. Since then it has grown to become the world leader in the production of ball bearings, something which has become a necessity for tanks and aircrafts. With huge demand we have decided to utilize the company to strike more lucrative trade deals with other nations. Our first deal was with France where we managed to trade the ball bearings for military knowledge and with the USA for cheaper food imports. Meanwhile the Germans had started their expansion by annexing all of Austria without resistance. 
This, together with our war support being over 30%, has allowed our government to put the nail in the coffin on opposition for remilitarization. This was done by deregulating our economy, ending most welfare spending, allowing us to safely rearm without sudden stability drops. But that wasn't all, fearing that facing the Germans and Soviets alone would lead to a certain destruction of our nation and democracy, our only hope is to find allies. And what better allies than our Nordic brothers? But to ally them would go against our neutral policy, so the government decided to simply scrap it. But to begin to form the Nordic Defense Council we need 70% stability. Since we have deployed all simple ways to get stability it will take some time. While we wait we can focus on military expansion. To train our army and update our old doctrines we have started war games. Currently our high command are split on which doctrine we should focus on, while they decided we will strengthen our arms manufacturers. Currently there are several aircraft factories competing against each other. By merging them together we will sharply strengthen our aircraft production and research. We will also expand Norma Projectile Fabrik, a Norwegian company that produces ammunition. Not only will this help against the lack of it, but it will also indirectly strengthen our relations with Norway. Finally, having managed to get 70% stability, we immediately sent our plans of a defensive treaty to our Nordic neighbors. We are a bit worried that everyone won't agree because our plan is for a centralized command. This would mean that the army and foreign policy of all nations will be decided in Stockholm by the Nordic Defense Council. But luckily the offer of mutual defense was too great to pass for Denmark and Finland, both bordering Stalin or Hitler. However, the Workers' Party of Norway, being anti-remilitarization and sitting in government, rejected. But their opposition, consisting of their version of the Farmers' Party and the Moderates, have invited us to invade the nation to fulfill Nordic unity. So, with the combined ground forces and military industry of Sweden, Denmark and Finland, we prepared an offensive into Norway. It will take some time to organize it due to confusion from all our soldiers and generals having to fight together with Finnish, Danish and Swedish brothers, but hopefully this war will remove any of it. The 21st of April we launched our invasion which came as a complete shock for the Norwegian government. Additionally our long border made it so that the Norwegian army had no way to defend everything. We began our invasion in the south towards Oslo and in the center towards Trondheim. Both attacks met minimal resistance and in some cases the Norwegian population even celebrated our arrival. Soon Oslo was captured and we continued towards Stavanger and Bergen. Seeing our success we started attacks in the north as well towards Narvik and Kirkense. Both were successful just like our attack to Trondheim which we had already managed to seize. Back to the south as Christine Sand and Stavanger had been captured without resistance we didn't even have to capture Bergen for the Norwegian government to surrender. To keep the Norwegian social democrats from fighting against us in the shadows we let them keep their government and the democratic institutions in Norway however they have been forced to become an equal council member and give away their army and military industry. While the war was a great success and showed how us Nordic nations can organize a strong army together it is still confusing. This is because so far only the land forces have been integrated into the Nordic Defense Council. Each country's air force and navies are still controlled by each nation. This has to be fixed and while we do we will prepare for the Soviets and Germans. We started by uniting our fleets which got us to 74 ships, probably the most in the Baltics. We then started with the air force but before we were done the Germans and Soviets had invaded Poland. And while Germany turned west towards France, Stalin looked to the north and declared war on Finland. Luckily we had managed to prepare for this war the best we could. Under Mannerheim we had built fortifications and set up our defenses quite deep into Finland to lure the Soviets into hard to supply areas. Due to this the only battle the first day of the war was in Petsamo. Scarily enough the Soviets are winning one of the two battles. And we have no reinforcements to send there. Since due to low manpower we haven't been able to recruit new divisions for the front. Luckily a high amount of Danish and Norwegian men have joined the army as volunteers and we can now train 15 new divisions. 
However, they will take time to arrive to the front, so we must hold off the Soviets with what we currently have. The battle that was losing did slowly turn to our side and by counterattacking with another unit we not only captured the province from the Soviets but also removed one direction of attack on our attacked province. While it was now secured Petsamu was starting to fall. By desperately defending we managed to hold their light tank division out of the city long enough to send one division as reinforcement. But before it reached the city, Germany declared war on Denmark. This won't affect us much right now since we've managed to build a level 5 fort on our border with them. But we still have to be wary once their Panzers inevitably return from France. With us fighting on the same side of the war as the Allies, the UK has invited us to it and we gladly joined. However, they won't join our war against the Soviets since that would put the Soviets and Germans way too close to each other. Looking back to the Soviet front, our reinforcement arrived just at the right time and achieved to stop the Soviet advance. It was also now that we could deploy our 15 divisions. While they are really untrained, they will at least help us solidify our defenses. That's when terrifying news arrived from Denmark. The Germans had amassed several tank divisions and begun an attack. While we tried to desperately defend, there was nothing we could do. They had soon passed our forts and seeing no chance to push them back, we decided to retreat from Jutland to Odense. The same time in Finland, the Germans distracting us had allowed the Soviets to break through both in Petsamo and in Karjala. Luckily the Soviets aren't at war with the Norwegians, so Kirkenes won't be captured, which has allowed us to defend the rest of northern Finland successfully. However, in the south we haven't stopped the Soviet advances completely. So to try and relieve some pressure, we started an attack towards Leningrad. The stupidest thing we could have done. Because as we arrived to the city, we woke up its 14 division garrison and they immediately counterattacked. The attack was so powerful we had to retreat from the Mannerheim line to Vipuri, but at least the front seems rather stable now. Some months later we launched our first counter-offensive. The objective was to take back our supply hub in Karjala, and we were triumphant, we even encircled one Soviet division. With this victory the confusion in the army was finally gone, and with the German threat neutralized due to our navy we will begin a second offensive against the Soviets. This time in the north where they are suffering significant attrition. This allowed us to quite easily liberate Sala and continue into Murmansk. Soon we had reached the White Sea, meaning the whole Kola Peninsula is split off from the rest of the USSR. The Soviets tried to perform a counter-offensive and while it did capture a lot of square kilometers, it allowed us to encircle two of their divisions and crush them. It also granted us the opportunity to liberate Petsamo since the Soviet forces in the area were weakened. With supply now perfect due to the port in Petsamo, we launched the last offensive here, with the goal of capturing the whole Kola Peninsula. After only a week we had encircled one division and reached Murmansk, the only Soviet port to the peninsula. With only a single division garrisoning it, we seized the city and its port, allowing us to destroy the rest of their forces and capture the peninsula rather quickly. We're lucky that it went so fast, since we need the troops freed up immediately in Norway. The Italians have gone around our coastal defenses in southern Norway and landed in Trondheim without resistance. Fortunately our allies held out until we arrived and we managed to stabilize the situation. The Brits soon brought out their navy and started raiding any Axis convoys trying to supply their forces. So it didn't take long to encircle two divisions, arrive to Trondheim, capture the port and encircle a lot of divisions who stood no chance at defending themselves without supply. While we had planned to return our forces to Finland, they had to deal with two other naval invasions in southern Sweden. But once they are cleared out, the Soviets will feel the wrath of our army.
with the Soviets being at their lowest point yet after the German Blitzkrieg reached the outskirts of both Moscow and Stalingrad once we captured Leningrad, they immediately surrendered and gave up their claim of Karyala as well as all of Karelia and the Kola Peninsula. Now that we are at peace with them and they are at war with the Germans, it means we are at the same side of the war. While we of course aren't in the same faction, it is our best interest that they don't fall apart, which means we will send our army to support the crumbling Red Army. We sent 48 divisions to their front, half of them to protect Leningrad and the other half to protect Moscow. They arrived just in the right time to keep the Germans out of the Soviet capital. As we were certain the city was secured, we started a counter-offensive. The Germans who hadn't planned to fight in the winter were easy to push back for our Finnish and Swedish soldiers. Soon we arrived outside of Rezev, an important supply hub. Since the Germans knew that the fall of it would force them to retreat even more, they desperately defended it and held back our forces. Instead of initiating a long and bloody battle to still try and seize it, we took a different approach. On the Leningrad front we have held the Germans back and our forces are ready for an offensive. If we reach Veliki Eluki we could cut off the only train track to Rezev and put the Germans in a strategic encirclement. We started the offensive in the western parts towards Poskov. The Germans, tired after trying to break through our defenses, caved under our pressure and the city was returned to Soviet control. With the flank secured, we started the main offensive to Veliki Eluki. While it went great at first, the further we advanced, the tougher resistance and attrition got. As we arrived one province away from the city, Mannerheim was forced to put a halt to the offensive. But to keep pressure high, we restarted our offensive in Moscow. While it looked promising at first, it quickly fell apart as the Germans with full supply managed to stop all attacks with the goal of capturing Rezev. However, Hitler made one huge miscalculation of thinking he could turn his defensive success into offensive ones. This only turned into the whole southern front being completely unorganized, allowing us to easily destroy their forces and rapidly advance south. Kaluga was the first city to fall, but Tula and even Orel eventually also fell. While the Germans could use this to capture Kalinin, it doesn't really matter. With Italy falling apart, possibly leading to a second front with the Germans, they are more vulnerable than ever. Additionally, the amount of directions we can attack has forced the Germans to spread out their tanks and infantry, making their defenses weaker. So we will use all this to our advantage and curb stomp the German army. After two absolutely massive encirclements, we have together with the Soviets killed almost 5 million German men. This is so much that small parts of the Eastern Front are without any divisions. It also allowed our allies to liberate most of Jutland. Sadly, the Germans managed to kick them back and encircle their troops, but it clearly shows that they are severely weakened. The Council has now decided to retreat from the Soviet Front to open another front and liberate Denmark all in one sweep. Sadly, this allowed the Germans to start an offensive against the Soviets, since they are completely incompetent alone, but by opening a new front they will be forced to stop. 
We arrived to Denmark just before the Germans crushed their allies, so sadly we didn't manage to save them. But we did avenge them. As soon as our first soldiers stepped their foot on Jutland, we swept the whole peninsula out of Nazis. And we didn't stop there, the Germans having not prepared for this were overwhelmed and the first German city fell after only a few days of fighting. Hamburg followed shortly after and despite resistance in Kiel being tough, we continued our offensive. Shortly thereafter, the city was encircled and promptly seized at the same time as we marched deep into German territory. Rostock, Magdeburg and Hanover were all cities that would fall. We even arrived to Berlin and while the battle was difficult, we eventually entered the Reichstag and took control over the whole city. With their capital captured, there is nothing they can do to stop their inevitable defeat. While resistance is starting to get tough, it is futile. As Leipzig was entered and a massive breakthrough finishing with our troops arriving in Breslau, all of northern Germany has been pacified. However, to reach the south will be harder, especially to capture all of the Rhineland since the Germans have organized their strongest defenses. But we still tried an offensive to secure the eastern part of the Rhine. In Frankfurt, the battle went from house to house and we could only accomplish our goal due to the help of the RAF. With the city captured, the rest of the eastern Rhineland followed quickly. We had crossed the Rhine in the offensive, but instead of trying to seize the rest of the Rhineland, we decided to turn towards the big German cities in the south. Towards this direction, the German defenses were weaker, allowing us to rather quickly break through and march south. Nuremberg was the first major city to fall, opening the road to München. But before we arrived to it, we reached the Swiss border, cutting Germany in two. After that, München was seized and we turned east to Austria and the German second capital, Vienna. Once again they couldn't stop us and with our troops entering Vienna, Hitler killed himself and the German high command surrendered. Still, the war isn't over, the Bulgarians and the Social Republic of Italy are still fighting for their life. However, with the brand new front opened and all German forces gone, the Italians quickly surrendered. And with unrest in Bulgaria, we managed to enter Sofia and end the Axis alliance for good. After a month of peace negotiations, the new borders of Europe were drawn. We got Königsberg and Memmel, while our Danish allies annexed everything from Schleswig-Holstein to Vorpommern. In the rest of Europe, Poland and Czechoslovakia both got re-established, but on separate sides. In Germany, the British, together with the French and Americans, set up an occupation zone. Turning to the Balkans, the Soviets established Soviet republics in all nations but Yugoslavia and Greece. Finally, the safety of Sweden and our Nordic brothers is secured. While the Soviets still are on our border, they have shown themselves completely incompetent. Our military industry might even be bigger than theirs. So we can now focus more on civilian problems and work towards Nordic integration. And if you are still a bit worried about the Soviets, our scientists have already started working on a solution. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.